Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi signed the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell today, sending it to the President for final signature tomorrow. Our first responsibility as elected officials is to protect the American people. It is part of the oath of office to protect and defend the Constitution, the people of our country, the values of our country. All of us on this stage have taken that oath, and perhaps many of you have in your uh, various capacities. But keeping America safe, again, our first responsibility, has to happen with the fullest participation of all Americans. Many honors are afforded members of Congress. I can't think of one that surpasses the honor that I will have now to sign the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. This is what the bill looks like, except it's longer than this. And after it is signed, it will go down Pennsylvania Avenue uh, to the White House, where tomorrow President Barack Obama, who has led us in this fight, will sign the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. This same legislation, again, will change the law, improve the policy, make life better for many Americans, and make our country stronger. Thank you all for making this happen. And now it is my honor to sign the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Tomorrow will be a giant step forward in realizing America's promise of equality for all. What makes this moment so proud for many of us and gives us an overwhelming sense of pride is that we never gave up, that we continue to fight even in the face of such incredible odds against us and so much hateful rhetoric and personal attacks. And during those moments when we were going through those challenges and those struggles, I'll never forget a year ago, that email from that company commander from Kabul, Afghanistan, in charge of 200 men and women, the best of the best. And he said, Congressman Murphy, I'm not from Bucks County, Pennsylvania. You're not my congressman. But I read an article in the Stars and Stripes newspaper yesterday. And I'm on my fourth deployment. And I've counseled so many of my soldiers who've gotten divorce paperwork in the mail or Dear John letters. And they have broke down in front of me and I'd walk them into the chaplain office. I'd make sure the battle buddies took care of them. I let our commanding officer know. But this young company commander, this captain, on his fourth deployment, wrote in an email saying, I never thought I'd see the day when I got one of those letters myself. And I'm sitting here at 3 o'clock in the morning in Kabul, Afghanistan. And I have nowhere to go because I happen to be gay. And I can't walk into the chaplain. And I can't go to a battle buddy, and I can't walk into my commander's office. So I'm sitting here cradling my nine, meter, nine millimeter pistol, thinking about blowing my brains out. But I read this article about this Iraq War veteran named Patrick Murphy from Pennsylvania that's fighting for me, and it gives me hope. All of in this room, everyone on this stage, and so many others that couldn't be here. We're with us during that fight. It's been a long journey, but it came to a rightful and just conclusion. God bless all of you, and God bless America. Thank you. I wait for my memoirs to get the details, but I can tell you <laughs> that there was significant pressure on them towards the end to make this go away and they wouldn't do it, and we are all indebted to them for it, along with our friends in the Senate. Finally, finally. In the coming weeks and months, a great weight will be lifted from the shoulders of our gay and lesbian service members who haven't had access to the same kind of support structure that other members of our military have taken for granted. Today is a vict victory for fairness, for national security, and for our values as Americans. I want to go back in as an officer and resume my career as a leader in the Air Force. 
the military is going to need gay role models, men and women who can serve as positive examples, officers and enlisted alike, of why this law was so wrong and harmed our national security so much. And so to, to all the men and women that are still serving out there today under this law, or the ones who are thinking about getting out, this day has come. Don't ask, don't tell is over. And you no longer have to sacrifice your integrity. And we need you as role models in the military about why the military is the best of America. We need gays and lesbians serving openly with zero detriment to our mission. That's what this is all about. Thank you. Reporting from Capitol Hill, this is Steve Fox with Washington Blade.